Welcome to an exciting journey into the fascinating world of the Navajo, a history that spans thousands of years, trials, and triumphs. The name Navajo originated during the Spanish colonization period and was later adopted by the Dina people. It came from a translation of the Tewa word Navajo, which means farm field in the valley. Early Spanish colonizers referred to the Navajo as the Apaches de Navajo, or the Apaches who farmed the valley. This was later shortened to Navajo. However, the true essence of their identity lies within the name Dain, meaning people in their native language. This reflects their profound unity as a community and is a powerful affirmation of their place in the world. Our adventure takes us back in time to a time when the Navajo people's ancestors were making a long journey. Anthropologists have traced the origins of the Navajo people to Asia, where they embarked on a journey, crossing the Bering Strait into North America around 800 to 1,000 years ago, during the final throes of the Ice Age. This extraordinary migration was not just a physical voyage, it was the inception of a remarkable saga. Guided by the unwavering spirit of resilience and the call of destiny, the Navajo migrated southward from regions of Canada, venturing through diverse terrains and experiences, eventually settling in the sprawling landscapes of the American Southwest. Anthropologists found that the Navajos split off from the southern Athabascans and migrated into the southern lands between 200 and 1300 AD. Yet their migration story is not just a historical account, it's intertwined with their captivating creation narrative, a journey that led them through four distinct worlds before they arrived in the fifth world, the world that is the canvas of their lives today. Culture and beliefs. Navajo spirituality is intricately woven into their land and sacred sites. These sites hold deep significance as places of worship and connection to their ancestors, a testament to their enduring spirituality. Between 900 and 1525 AD, the Navajo nation established trade networks with both the Anasazi and historic Pueblo peoples in the area of present-day northwestern New Mexico. They brought new goods and technologies, such as flint points and moccasins, to the southwest, also spreading into northeastern Arizona and southeastern Utah post-1620 AD. One of the most profound aspects of the Navajo people's story is their unbreakable bond with the land that cradles their dreams and aspirations. They sing the tale of the emergence, in which first man, first woman, and the people descend from the first world to the fourth world, the Earth surface world. They brought the four sacred mountains, which are majestic landmarks named Cisnagini, also known as Blanca Peak in Colorado, Sudzi, also known Mount Taylor in New Mexico, Duca Oost, also known as the San Francisco Peaks, and Dibain Tsa, also known as Mount Hesperus. These mountains serve as eternal witnesses to their journey and as guardians of their world. Each mountain is closely connected to cardinal directions, seasons, colors, and clans. Navajo existence mirrors the harmony of nature itself as they embrace the three sisters, corn, beans, and squash, as foundational elements of their sustenance. As sheep and goats entered, these animals not only provided them with sustenance and resources, but also wove a new thread into their cultural tapestry, amplifying their connection to the land and showcasing their adaptability. Their spiritual practices, from ceremonies to rituals, shape their daily lives, fostering a profound sense of belonging and community. Long ago, the ancestors of the Navajo blended their own customs with those of the ancestral Puebloans. This mixture added deep-rooted wisdom to the foundation of Navajo culture. In the beginning, the early Navajo were nomadic hunters and gatherers, but when they moved to the southwest region, they started adopting the ways of the settled Pueblo Indians, who were farmers and lived nearby. The Navajo began interacting with the Pueblo tribes around the 17th century, especially after refugees from some Rio Grande Pueblos sought refuge with the Navajo following the Spanish quashing of the Pueblo Revolt. During the 18th century, due to drought and famine, some members of the Hopi tribe joined the Navajo, particularly in Canyon de Chelly in northeastern Arizona. Embedded within Navajo life is a beautifully intricate blend of practicality and creative expression. A striking example of this artistic fusion is seen in Navajo rugs. Additionally, elements of Navajo ceremonies like dry sand painting were influenced by these interactions. Another significant Navajo artistic tradition is crafting silver jewelry, which started around the mid-1800s and likely originated with Mexican artisans. The Hogan, a distinctive architectural wonder with its unique structure and always east-facing entrance, goes beyond being a mere shelter. 
It represents their harmonious connection with the environment and their deep respect for the life-giving sun. And then there's their astonishing mastery of various art forms, woven rugs that narrate tales, intricate pottery that connects generations, and stunning silver jewelry that immortalizes their heritage. In the heart of Navajo culture, where challenges like illness arise, a symphony of remedies comes into play. Traditional Navajo belief sees illness as a result of transgressions against the supernatural or witchcraft. Herbs, medicine men known as diagnosticians, heartfelt prayers and soul-stirring songs are all woven together to bring solace and healing. With over 50 distinct ceremonies, each woven into the fabric of Navajo life, they carry a unique purpose and moment. From sunrise to sunset, these ceremonies unfold, some as brief as hours, others stretching across nine days. These rituals paint stories on sand altars, intricate dry paintings that echo mythical tales. Life's milestones, whether raising a hogan or tending to crops, become ceremonial dances with nature, guided by songs and prayers. From those dark days emerged a renaissance of Navajo culture. Passed down through generations, traditional dishes hold a timeless connection. It's not just sustenance, it's a welcome for visitors and an expression of gratitude. Traditional cooks measure ingredients by memory, often over an open fire. Wild plants and vegetables like spinach, onions, turnips, berries and even cactus lend their flavors. Take, for example, cedar brush, adding its essence to a beloved Navajo delight, blue cornmeal pudding. Many Navajos wore velvet, turquoise and silver attire during ceremonial or social gatherings. For women, it's foot or knee-high moccasins, a pleated skirt, a matching blouse, concho belts, jewelry and a shawl. Men embraced jewelry, moccasins and velveteen shirts. Long before people made their clothing from materials like sheep's wool, yucca plants and deer skin, they crafted breech cloths for men and skirts for women. The Navajo individuals exhibit remarkable dynamism and creativity, holding a deep conviction in the mind's capacity to think and innovate. This belief finds its outlet through a rich tapestry of symbolic expressions within the Navajo language, artistic endeavors, and ceremonial practices. The Navajo language uniquely incorporates a significant element of humor within the fabric of everyday communication. This skillful use of humor serves to transform challenging and vexing situations, rendering them more manageable and even enjoyable. The profound emphasis and significance that the Navajo people attribute to humor become evident in the ritual known as the first laugh. This ceremonial occasion marks the first instance where a Navajo child bursts into laughter, signifying a time of reverence and jubilation. The spiritual beliefs of the Navajo people revolve around the idea of restoring balance and harmony in one's life to promote good health. Within Navajo culture, individuals are categorized into two groups, earth people and holy people. According to Navajo creation mythology, Existence spans four worlds, with the fourth world being Earth, which we currently inhabit. As Earth people, Navajos are responsible for upholding equilibrium between Mother Earth and humanity. The significance of numbers is evident in various religions, and for the Navajo, the number four holds special reverence. This is reflected in various aspects of their beliefs, such as the original four clans of Dain, the four symbolic colors and times of the day, and the use of four sacred songs during rituals. The topic of death and the afterlife have traditionally been approached with caution among the Navajo. They spoke sparingly about the deceased, and burials were conducted promptly and privately. Ritual taboos were observed by close relatives and those handling the body. Views on the afterlife were diverse, lacking a systematic interpretation. Unlike concepts of rewards or punishments for earthly deeds, the afterworld wasn't perceived as a joyful or desirable realm. Central to Navajo spiritual practices, are the revered singers. These individuals, primarily men but occasionally women, possess the ability to perform one or more of the major Navajo ceremonies. Unlike shamans, they are seen as priests who have dedicated years to apprenticeship under established singers. Singers carry immense respect within Navajo society and often hold informal leadership roles. Those with lesser ritual knowledge capable of shorter ceremonies are known as curers. Additionally, a distinct group of diagnosticians or diviners plays a role in identifying the sources of illness or misfortune using shamanistic techniques and subsequently prescribing suitable ceremonial remedies. The art of silver craftsmanship is deeply rooted in Navajo culture, a skill that they learned from the Spanish. At Sidi Sani, born around 1830, 
is credited as the first Navajo silversmith. He acquired his expertise from a Mexican artisan named Nakai Tsosi, thin Mexican, in approximately 1878. Atsidi Sani generously shared his knowledge with fellow Navajos, leading to the establishment of silversmithing as a significant art form within the tribe. By the late 19th century, Navajo silversmiths were fashioning intricate handmade jewellery, including bracelets, necklaces, tobacco flasks and braces. As their craft evolved, they ventured into crafting silver earrings, buckles, hair decorations, pins and iconic squash blossom necklaces. While Navajo jewellery often incorporates turquoise, this distinctive stone didn't become a common element until the latter part of the 19th century. Navajo weaving has gained immense recognition for its exceptional quality and captivating geometric patterns. These traditional flat tapestry woven textiles have been sought after trade items for more than 150 years. Initially, Navajo textiles served practical purposes like cloaks, dresses and saddle blankets. However, as interactions with the Western world increased in the late 19th century, weavers began producing rugs intended for tourism and export. Navajo sand painting, also referred to as dry paintings, holds deep spiritual significance, symbolizing the realms where deities traverse in Navajo belief. These intricate designs play a vital role in healing ceremonies by invoking blessings upon harvests and seeking cures for illnesses. The figures depicted within the sand painting symbolize sacred entities like the mountains inhabited by gods and legendary visions. Additionally, they can portray specific dances or chants performed during ceremonial rituals. Traditional Navajo music primarily revolves around vocals and encompasses an array of instruments such as drums, rattles, drumsticks, flutes, rasps, whistles and bull roarers. Within Navajo culture, there exist specialized singers known as Hatali, or medicine people, who are responsible for conducting ceremonial and prayer rituals. Their songs are believed to restore hoj, a concept encompassing notions of harmony, beauty, well-being, serenity and balance. Modern Navajo music encompasses a diverse range of genres, spanning from country and rock to rap. Furthermore, it is performed in both the English and Navajo languages, reflecting the dynamism of contemporary Navajo musical expression. The Navajo tribe had developed a traditional governance system called Dina Bibi Hazani, which is an intricate framework that respects harmony, balance and collective decision-making. Guided by spiritual principles, this governance system empowers the Navajo people to uphold their heritage and navigate modern challenges. The Navajo people share a similarity with other Apachean groups in their overall inclination towards decentralized tribal and political structures. However, they have embraced pan-tribal governance and legal frameworks to uphold their tribal autonomy. In traditional Navajo society, their social structure revolved around matrilineal kinship. Decisions within small, self-governing units of kin were typically reached through consensus. While such kin-based units still persist, they are now often determined by both familial ties and geographical location, growth and development before invasions. Prior to the 1850 ES, the Navajo enjoyed independence from external colonial, political and missionary influences. They adhered to an informal and decentralized system encompassing political, social and economic aspects. This system was centered around local land use groups that were organized based on clan, household and genealogical connections. Each of these local groups was led by an individual who facilitated negotiations among the adults within the band. Among the key figures who have left an indelible mark on Navajo history are leaders like Manuelito, Barboncito and Chief Manuelito. These visionaries navigated challenging times, guiding their people with wisdom and courage. Meet Manuelito. 1818 to 1893, the visionary warrior. Born near Utah's Bears Ears, Manuelito belonged to the Bitani clan, linked through his mother. Cayetano, his father, was a prominent Navajo figure. As a young man, Manuelito engaged in a daring Pueblo Indian ambush, earning the name Hashke Naba, the angry warrior. Another moniker, Bullet Hole, stemmed from a bullet wound etched on his chest. At 16, he married Narbona's daughter, uniting two influential families. When Narbona fell, Manuelito was appointed official chief by Governor David Merriweather of New Mexico in 1855. Signatory to the 1868 treaty, Manuelito secured the Navajos' return to ancestral lands, embodying resilience. Unveiling Barbonchito, 1821 to 1871, 
the resolute trailblazer Canyon de Celli's own Barboncito, a beacon of Navajo leadership, evolved from a peace advocate to a warrior in 1860. In 1865, he orchestrated a daring escape with 500 followers, defying New Mexican militia pursuit. With a reputation for unyielding diplomacy, Barboncito became a spokesperson for the Diné, disillusioned by Carlton's vision. He fled eastern New Mexico, transferring leadership responsibility to Delgadito, a figure with a complex history, historical events, European influence. However, there are significant historical events that mark the growth and development of the Navajo Nation. The arrival of Spanish explorers brought about a significant chapter in Navajo history. Recorded contact between them came in 1583 in the area of Dineta. In 1680, Navajo and Apache groups supported Pueblo Indians in the Pueblo Revolt, a war against the Spanish for independence, who had been brutal and enslaved the Pueblos for decades. The rebellion forced the Spanish to return to Mexico for a time, but in 1693, the Spanish reconquered the Rio Grande Valley. Some Pueblos took refuge among the Navajo, resulting in a cultural exchange between the Navajo and Pueblo tribes. Spain's quest for territory introduced horses and livestock, reshaping the Navajo economy and lifestyle. Later, the Mexican-American War led to US control over Navajo territory. Amid these shifts, Navajo autonomy eroded and cultural suppression began. Missionary efforts sought to dismantle traditional beliefs while treaties diminished tribal sovereignty. The imprint of European arrival is etched indelibly in Navajo history. The loss of land, the fracturing of communities, and the erosion of tradition left a lasting scar. Today, the Navajo grapple with the enduring consequences, facing socio-economic challenges and striving for self-determination. Despite these struggles, they persist, weaving a new chapter in their story that honors their heritage while navigating the complexities of the modern world. They also adopted the horse, and like other tribes that used the animal as a means of transportation, sometimes engaged in slave and food raids on neighboring tribes. This interaction, however, didn't compromise the Dine people's core values, as they fiercely maintained their cultural distinctiveness. The Navajo's resilience during this period laid the groundwork for their later encounters with European powers and their determination to preserve their heritage. In the annals of Navajo history, a pivotal chapter unfolds, an era of endurance and triumph over insurmountable adversity, a chapter known as the Long Walk. While their raids were not as extensive as the Apaches, they caught the attention of the US government. In 1863, Colonel Kit Carson was tasked with subduing them, who used scorched earth tactics to force the surrender of the Navajo. This led to the brutal campaign that resulted in the devastation of crops and herds and the forced confinement of 8,000 Navajo and 400 Mescalero Apache at Bosque Redondo, 180 miles south of Santa Fe. The journey was treacherous, the conditions harsh, but the spirit of the Navajo people blazed a path through the darkness. The mid-1800s brought the Navajo face to face with conflict. The ordeal cost lives, disintegrated families, and fractured the fabric of Navajo society. This traumatic event showcased the extent of European oppression. Historical events, US government interference. The lifestyles of native peoples underwent significant changes beginning in the middle of the 19th century as a result of new American government policy toward American Indians. More indigenous peoples were forcibly evicted from their homes as a result of wars fought over territory. Numerous American Indian children, including Pueblo, Ute and Navajo children, were removed from their homes and put to boarding schools between 1880 and 1940. Initially sponsored by Christian churches, these institutions later came under the control of the Bureau of Indian Affairs, a branch of the federal government. They were disciplined for speaking their home tongues or attempting to follow native customs while there, where they were taught English, how to dress like a white American, and other practical skills. The assimilation of Indian youngsters into society was the boarding school's concept and principal goal. Today, their flourishing communities, strides in education, and revitalized connections to their land stand as a testament to their endurance and shared strength. The Navajo people's return to their homeland marked a triumphant resurgence. In 1868, the Treaty of Bosque Redondo was signed, recognizing the Navajo Nation's sovereignty and granting them a reservation encompassing their sacred lands. This rebuilding period showcased the Dine people's remarkable ability to heal and adapt. 
reaffirming their connection to their heritage and the land they hold sacred. The discovery of oil on Navajo land in 1922 embarked on a new political stance as non-Navajo companies needed local authorities with whom they could negotiate contracts. In 1923, the US government selected three Navajo men as a business council to handle lease grants, and in 1938, it formed the Navajo Tribal Council. Since the 1930s, the Navajo and Washington have fought over US-led changes like acculturation, moving to a new area, reducing livestock and land issues. Today, the Navajo Nation's ancestral lands span over 24,000 square miles across New Mexico, Arizona and Utah. The arid terrain presents challenges to sustaining agriculture and livestock. Many Navajo embrace innovation, seeking opportunities outside their homeland while maintaining a strong connection to their roots. Despite external threats, the Navajo found strength and direction by maintaining their traditions. The repeated ceremonial words, Sa'anagai Bike Hozho, signify the struggle for a long life in beauty, order and harmony with the environment. Our journey through Navajo history is a testament to their strength, resilience and enduring cultural heritage. From ancient origins to contemporary challenges, the Navajo people's story is one of unity, courage and unwavering commitment to their traditions. As we conclude this chapter, let's honor their history by continuing to learn from and support indigenous communities worldwide. Join us next time as we continue to explore the captivating narratives that shape humanity. Thank you for joining us.